So let's continue with part two of this first lecture. And um, a, a number of the photographs that you'll see in the remainder of this presentation come from an uh, artist, a, a police reporter, who also um, documented the conditions of the poor in New York um, in the 1890s. His name was Jacob Rees. And his most important book, he published several, but his mo most li widely known one, and you can find this all over the internet if you find it interesting enough from these images to want to read more. It's out there everywhere for you to read. It's called How the Other Half Lives, Studies Among the Tenements of New York, and it was published in 1890. And he documented the living conditions of these people. This is one example of, of one of his photographs of a number of people crammed into these really tiny um, I guess we're used to calling them apartment houses, but they were called tenements. Um, just, you know, the conditions just were not good. There were, there were window, window lifts and, and got very little air and light. Um, perfect, per perfect places for disease to, to wipe out sections of the population, which happened um, with, with uh, quite regularity and frequency. So tenements were um, what we call apartment buildings. Um, but what, what these slumlords did was sometimes take the apartments they already had and block them into even smaller ones, right? put up thin partitions to make the apartments even smaller, um, or they built apartments, and we'll look at a, a floor plan of, of, of a floor of, of a tenement to kind of see what that might have looked like in a moment, um, just so as many people could crowd into these um, tenements as possible so they could get more money. And they charged exorbitant rents, so people really had to have more families than just the one living in it in order to be able to afford it. They often didn't have their own bathrooms or their own kitchens. Um, again, there was very little light because these apartments were inside apartments, inside apartments, inside apartments, so they were like kind of nesting boxes or they were built on these plans with these really long hallways where hundreds of people were sharing just a few bathrooms. And you can imagine how, how quickly um, things would deteriorate. And they were of shoddy construction in the first place. So these, some of these images here from the 1890s to around the 1910s, again in the same time period that Crane would have been writing Maggie. And so these are the kind of tenements that those characters are living in. And people also worked in their um, apartments, right? They brought home work, did piece work, usually garment work. Um, Maggie makes collars and um, cuffs. Those were detachable, and you, you would wear your the, a dress or, or a man's shirt, and the collars and cuffs would be detachable. Um, so here we're looking over, and you can tell this is a train up here. Um, looking over a block of these tenements, and you can see it's apparently laundry day. Everybody has their laundry out to dry. Um, and a lot of these things didn't, places didn't even have running water. They had to bring in water. So you can see um, all these people overlooking the back kind of a courtyard. And this is, if kids were going to play, this is where it was going to happen, right? And many children did not make it out of childhood, as you can imagine. Um, street urchins, they called them urchins, or street Arabs. Um, I'm not sure why the, the term Arabs, I've, I've never had a chance to look it up and see why they called them that, but sleeping outside, uh, probably without parents, um, disease took away so many parents, waves of cholera and typhoid and all sorts of other things came through, influenza, and left um, quite a large number of, of orphans. Um, so they would just kind of huddle together for protection. You read in Maggie about the gangs of boys fighting. Some of those would have had parents, some may not have, but they kind of gathered together for protection. So in 1879, this is information I pulled right from Wikipedia, um, a law was passed to require um, every, every tenement to have windows so fresh air could come through because you can imagine if there is no windows then the air in these rooms would grow quite stale and dangerous, right? The buildup of carbon dioxide would be quite dangerous. So they called them, I'm going to go down a slide here and come back, they called them dumbbell tenements because they were shaped like a dumbbell, you know those weights, those hand weights. And you can see that right here, this indented section here, is the only place there would have been windows. You see the little windows there, all right? There are a couple of windows at that end with fire escapes. Um, some of these rooms were 10 feet by 12 feet wide, very tiny. Um, 
And in this place right here, and you can see 14, uh, 24 families to a lot, uh, on a lot, uh, da, da, 14 rooms on each floor. Can you imagine in, in a building that's only 100 feet deep and 25 feet wide? Go home and measure your own house and kind of see how big that is. Even your own apartment if you live in an apartment and you'll kind of get an idea of how small these, these places were. But this is the only place where there was anti, any ventilation, and this is what they called ventilation. Here are two buildings, building on this side, building on this side. This was an air shaft that they built, so they built it in this format so that they could be wider through there. Just this one section, the rest of it will touch. The walls on either side will pretty much touch, but this section is left open here so a little bit of air can go down there. So what did people do? They started throwing their trash down there, <laughs> right? So now you have garbage rotting because they didn't have um, um, garbage service. There was nowhere to take your, your, your garbage and, and your waste, right? So you had a chamber pot to um, use for uh, elimination in the middle of the night. You just dump it down this, this shaft. So you can imagine how unsanitary that is. So they meant well by passing that act, but obviously it didn't. Uh, it caused more problems than there were before. So you can read some of this information if you'd like. So this, this is the sort of environment our character Maggie is um, growing up in, and we'll see what the result of that will be.